I'm going to go to Photoshop and we're going to be talking about poster design. This is a poster that was created by Alberto Tavera, who is one of my students. Um, let me just explain a little bit about the mechanics of this poster. It's a low poly um, portrait of LeBron James, and he used this photograph in order to create his design. Um, so the first thing I need to do is I'm going to do file export export as and I'm going to save this as a PNG as a portable network graphic. The second thing I'm going to do once I have that PNG is I'm going to open the PNG. So file open and it would have the extension Um, dot png on it so it'll say png file so let me open up the png so now i have the photoshop file psd photoshop document and the png portable network graphic so the P portable network graphic has is very useful because it's just the image we want and it also has a transparent background so I'm going to take that portable network graphic and I'm going to do select all, edit, copy, and then I'm going to do file new. And I'm going to click over here where it says print. And I've got letter size here and the size is eight and a half by 11 inches with 300 pixels per square inch. This is ideal for printing because it's the same size as the printer in our classroom and the 300 pixels per square inch means that it won't be all um, pixelated and low resolution when I do print it out. So I'm going to create this new document and I already copied the image and now I'm going to do edit paste. Now you can see it's too small, okay? So it's really super important that before you design the rest of the poster, you um, enlarge it. So you do file, um, sorry, edit, transform, scale. And you just pull the corner and it'll get larger. And now you have to figure out where to put it on, how big you want it to be, and also where to put it on the document. So I've decided that I want to put it over here. Now it's very important that you don't put anything too close to the edge. And that is because of something called the bleed. So if you were to print something in a magazine and the magazines were being cut by a machine, you don't want the edge of the, um, design to be so close to the edge that when the pages get sliced it might inadvertently slice off part an essential part of the design and inversely you don't want it on this side to be too close to here because if it's in a newspaper and there's a fold and the staple is here you don't want part of the design hidden by the staple so you always have to consider the bleed and move it accordingly however um, I don't have that concern at the bottom. I would rather a little bit of his shorts get cut off than to have it look messed up because it's too high up and it looks like somebody chopped off his actual legs. So you have to consider where you want your design to go off the edge of the page and where you do not want it to go off the ed um, edge of the page. So you have to be extremely intentional about it. Um, when I put his legs down here and they go off the edge of the page, what I'm trying to make people think is that it's almost like a window or a mirror. And that if you walk up to the picture real close and you lean in and you look around the corner, the picture continues outside of the frame. Kind of like when you walk up to a mirror and you look around the corner, you can see the image continues off to the side the, the the feeling that you're looking into another world and you don't get that if you mess up and you leave a space there you do get it if you hug this to the edge however 
here you've got a benefit to leaving some negative space. Now the next thing I need to think about is colors. So if I go back to the Photoshop document and I hide the top layer and unhide the bottom layer and I zoom in here with my magnifying glass, I can pick up these colors. So the first color that I want to pick up is the purple of the Lakers lettering. So I just uh, click the foreground color swatch and then I use the eyedropper right on top of the color and you can see what the color looks like here in the in the color picker but some of it's going to look almost black because of uh, it's in shadow so you have to be very careful where you're picking the color from so let's see this actually looks like the true purple of his uniform so I'm going to hit OK on that and now I'm going to go back to um, my untitled document and I have this color now as my foreground color it's already set so I'm going to now go in here to the horizontal text type tool and I'm going to pull out a text box now you're going to get a bunch of gibberish here. It's going to say lorem ipsum. Um, it's just a sort of a fake language. It's not Latin. It's not English. It's just a fake language that is used for fill on graphic designs. The first thing you need to do is hit the delete or backspace key on your keyboard to get rid of that gibberish. And then you want to um, put in the words LeBron James. Now it's very important that you look up how the person spells their name. So for instance, in LeBron James's case, let me just change the lettering to um, the foreground color. See how I, up here is the swatch for the co um, color for the um, lettering. So I'm changing it to match the foreground color. And now uh, it's very, very important that you um, be mindful of the fact that people spell their names differently. So for instance, the B in LeBron is capitalized. You might have to Google that to make sure that you don't mess up. Um, the other thing you can do is if you find a reliable source of how the person spells their name is you can go and copy it and you can actually paste it as long as you're in the text tool and you've pulled out a text box. Now the next step is picking a font. So once I've typed this out, I highlight it and I'm going to actually go through the fonts and see uh, if I can find a good font that, that I think is worthy of LeBron James. And one of the things that you might want to do is you might actually want to go back and look at the Lakers font and see if you can, you're not going to find the exact font, but um, looking at it, it has what are called serifs, these little things on the ends. Um, so you don't want to use a font that doesn't have serifs because you're trying to be kind of true to the... So let me find, let me, I'm in the text tool. Let me highlight my text. Um, and I'm going to go here to... Um, and find some fonts that have serifs, so it's kind of true to the Lakers. And some fonts would be absolutely awful, like Cooper Black just looks like a, a little kid font. It wouldn't necessarily be um, the right one. Um, this one, Engravers, is nice. Um, I'm trying to find one with a... Okay, here we go. This one isn't bad, okay? So not 100% perfect, but um, I did try and pick a font that has a serif. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to curve my type. So you go here, and that's the T with the curve underneath, and that will allow you to warp the text. So you can make it into an arc. Um, you could make it into a flag. You, you can do all sorts of things. So let's see, I'll do, let me do a flag and then you can actually distort it. However, 
you have to be very, very careful if you distort it that you don't make it unreadable. You should still be able to read it. So don't distort it too much. The other thing is once you hit OK on this, you can actually um, tilt the type, edit, transform, rotate. So I can rotate the type. Now, if you wanted to center it, just sliding it over until you see that purple line, that purple line tells you it's exactly in the center. Okay, the purple vertical line. Um, so if you actually had an idea that centering the type was important because of the design, then that's something you could do. The other thing is you can do edit transform scale and you can actually make the type larger or smaller to fit your design because I'm worried about the the lettering going too far off the edge of the paper and not looking good. Um, so let me just take care of that. Maybe I don't want the type to be huge. Uh, maybe it's too close to his head. So you really need to kind of play around with it. Um, you don't necessarily need to center it because his body is off the center of the page. Having the type be off the center in this particular instance actually works. Um, and you can just keep transforming it, rotating it, etc. And now I'm going to hit the check mark. All right, again, I don't want it too near the top of the page, so I may need to use the move tool. Okay, so now um, when I slide it over, I can see that purple line appearing, which means that the center of the text is in alignment with the center of the page. Um, now, I want to talk for a few minutes about what's called the rule of thirds. So if you take a ruler and you pull it down and you put it approximately a third of the way up and another ruler and pull it down and make it approximately two thirds of the way up and you do the same thing with the horizontal lines, a third of the way across and two thirds of the way across. Sorry, cancel. Um, Again, I didn't measure it, but when you do that, when you use the rule of thirds, you can make your design a lot more interesting. So the rule of thirds states that the points of interest either are on the lines or where the lines cross each other. So that means if I take my move tool and I move him over here and his head is on the line and where the lines cross each other, that the design will be a little bit more dynamic. Now, of course, that puts his hand too close to the edge. So there's a whole balance involved in creating a composition. So I left a space here. I put his head where the lines cross and I then took the text and moved that to interact interestingly with, um, with the design. while still making sure the text is readable. So there's a, a lot of things going on here. Now I'm gonna hit the check mark. And now my next step is let me pull these lines off the page because I don't really want them there anymore. So I just have to use my move tool. Now that I've figured out the rule of thirds, these lines can be extremely distracting. So let me just pull them off of here. And now I can work on the rest of my design. So I need something for the background. The background's just too plain and white. I could put a solid color in the background or I could find an image to put in the background or I could create an image to put in the background. I've opted to find an image 
but I have to make sure that I'm not violating the copyright of another artist. So I'm going to open a new window, new window. And let me just make sure I'm still recording here. I am. Okay, so I'm in my new window. I'm in Google. And I am now going to go to... Uh, I know LeBron James is a basketball player, so I'm going to just type in basket, basketball court. Okay? So I'm going to change it from regular search to image search. And then from image search, I'm going to use some important tools. I want a black and white photograph of a basketball court. So I'm going to switch from any color to black and white. And now under usage rights, I want something with a Creative Commons license because I don't want to be in a situation where I am violating the copyright of another artist. So I'm going to find a basketball hoop that is, it says here, maxpixel.net sports. I'm just going to click on it and you can see it says free photo sports, black and white basketball. So I know that this is something that I can use and I won't be violating another artist's rights. So I'm going to visit the site uh, instead of visiting the site, actually. Um, I'm going to right click and I'm going to open image in new tab. And this is very important because if you just copy the image off of here, it could be very low resolution. So if I go here and now I can right click save image as, and I have that image. Um, I already actually saved this image earlier. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to do file open. And I'm going to grab this basketball net that I just opened and I'm going to do select all edit copy and I'm going to now go back here and I'm going to go to the background layer and I'm going to do edit paste and you can see it's very small so I have to do edit transform scale you see how big that is it takes up the whole thing, but and now I hit the check mark. It has I have a problem. I I can't see him very clearly anymore because this basketball net's getting in the way. I can barely see the letters. Okay, so right now I'm going to hide this and I'm going to do a few things to these letters to make sure that I can see them better. So I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to do layer layer style. And I'm going to add in a drop shadow. So you can change the angle, you can change the, um, the placement of the shadow, how much the shadow spreads out. Um, but the idea is to give it a little bit of a 3D look. Okay, so that's one thing you can do. I'm actually going to hit cancel on that though, because instead of a drop shadow, I want to do something else. I'm going to do layer, duplicate layer. And in that layer, I'm going to go back to my text tool and I'm going to go to To here, I'm going to highlight my text I want to highlight all of it. I guess I'll just highlight the bottom. Okay. Um, and I'm going to now change the color. So I'm going to go up here and the color I'm going to pick is actually from his uniform. Okay. And now let me highlight this text here. And do the same.
Okay, so now I've got this yellow text. <coughs> and I'm going to take this yellow text and I'm going to pull it underneath the purple text. And then I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to move it. In order to move it, I'm going to need to lock the top layer so I don't accidentally move that. I'm going to need to <coughs> click into this bottom layer. And I'm going to have to click on the Move tool. And just doing that will give this a 3D look. Now, I can take this yellow layer, which is underneath the purple layer. I can do layer, layer style. And I can do <coughs> drop shadow. And that will actually give it a third layer. Now that's a little bit much. It's not really working. But maybe if I just do it a little bit. It might look interesting. I don't know. I'm not sure. Now, let's unhide that bottom layer and see how it looks. It's worse than ever. I can't see anything going on here. There's too much going on. And now I can't see the letters at all. So what do I do? Um, one of the things you can do is you can add in another layer on top of this layer. So on top of this layer, I'm going to do layer new layer. And in this new layer, I'm going to do Edit, Fill, and I'm going to pick a color that's kind of a darkish blue. Okay, so right now I've got this purple color from the Lakers. And I think I'm going to just go a little bit more into the blue range. Now hit OK, and I'm filling this in. Okay, now... Obviously, that's also too much, and I've lost the entire basketball in the background. So what do I do? Uh, well, one of the things you can do is play around with the blending modes. So So something like this might be interesting, but it's still too much. I still can't see the lettering properly. So the next thing I would do is change the opacity. And change the opacity of this one. So also with this one, I can change the blending modes. So that's kind of interesting. And then I could change the opacity on this one. So that's kind of interesting. And now I'm going to go back to the lettering and I think I'm getting rid of that yellow. And I also think I'm going to take this uh, purple lettering. I'm going to click on this and maybe I just need to make it larger. So. You go to the this layer with the type in it. You're going to go to Edit, Transform, Scale. So I, I hope what you're realizing here is that in order to create an effective poster, you actually have to play with the design. You, you can't just expect the design to look perfect unless you toy with the elements and really aren't afraid to manipulate them. until you hit on something that truly works for you. So 
now it kind of gives the image that this is snaking up towards this basket in the background. The basket's in the background, but it's not overwhelming the picture. It's obvious that the most important thing in the picture is LeBron himself. LeBron himself. The text is, I probably could be more readable. Maybe I warped it too much. Um, so I could go back and play with that. But at least the background is receding and not competing with the subject. So um, going to the lettering, if I wanted to change the lettering, I could do layer, layer styles. And I can actually do what's called a gradient overlay. So in this case, I created a gradient with light to dark purple. And if I hit OK, then I can play around with that. Um, if you do layer, layer style, gradient overlay, and you want to edit the gradient or reverse it, make it go from dark to light, that could be done as well. But if you double click on the gradient, you can actually change it. You can change what colors. And there's a lot of different choices as far as color. Um, so let me just play around with making this a little darker. Hit OK and hit OK. And that could be kind of an interesting thing to do. I actually um, don't really like it. Um, I think it's better with the darker color, but I just wanted to show you that if you wanted to play around with using a gradient on the color, and there are other um, layer, layer styles that you can um, play around with. Um, an inner shadow might be interesting. That actually makes the it look a little bit more 3D, but it also... Um, pops it a little. So that could be an interesting uh, addition. So play around with the different layer styles um, in case you hit on something that makes your design better. When you're done, you're going to uh, ex save obviously your entire layered document and put it into Google Classroom, but you're also going to export it as a JPEG. Um, uh, you could also export it as a PNG. Uh, PNGs are good if you need a transparent background, which you would need. You wouldn't want like a white box around this. Um, but uh, JPEG is also fine uh, for this assignment because now that you have the background, you don't need a transparent background. Uh, a portable network graphic or PNG. Um, the P for portable means you can transport it into different projects and you don't have that white box or colored box from the background interfering with your design. So um, the final design you can export as a JPEG. Just do file, export, export as, and from this drop down window over here, you would pick JPEG, okay? And then you would hit export. And that is the assignment. The only other thing is, I just want you to notice, this says Untitled 2 as the name of the document. You do not want to export anything called Untitled 2 because you'll never be able to find it again. So you do want to make sure that you do Save As you save it on your computer, you name it, um, LeBron poster, finished, okay, um, and then once you've saved the Photoshop file, when you export, export as, it will, you now look at the drop down menu, make sure it says JPEG, it will actually have the correct name, it'll be called LeBron James, LeBron poster finished.